Hello, this is Waste and Recycling News Editor John Campanelli, and I'm here at Waste Expo in Las Vegas with the man of the show, Bruce Parker, outgoing CEO and president of uh, Environmental Industry Associations, and it's, uh, it's got to be, uh, what kind of week is it for you? Tell me what's going through your mind. It's your, it's your last Waste Expo. It's a week of uh, mixed emotions for me because 30 years is a long time in any industry and this has been my home and been my family for 30 years. And even though I know that there's life after uh, EIA, it's still difficult. I feel a very deep sense of loss. And I think that's probably typical of others who retire no matter where it is. Uh, my, my, you define yourself by where you work, particularly for a long period of time. On the other hand, the positive side is uh, it's change and it's a challenge and I like challenges and I realize that uh, there's more to life than working seven days a week and I've been a workaholic. So I'm looking forward to finding what my passion is and to taking a little time off. But, and I also like to keep my, uh, my, uh, my uh, fingers in the solid waste. So you're going to... Yeah, to set, I don't want to work full time, but I like to do something. Do you have anything set up yet? Or? I do not. Okay. I do not. Are you going to drive a truck maybe? Uh, my problem with driving a truck, John, is because of my personality, it would not be very efficient because I'd probably stop at every stop and ask the knock on the door and say, how you doing? Are we giving mm -hmm. you good service? Can I come in for a cup of coffee? I don't think I would make money for the company. And 20 years from now, when you're in your 20th year of retirement, mm -hmm. what's the solid waste industry going to be like? Is it going to re has, will it have reached that evolution of being a... 20 years from now? And what do you think? Well, I, th I think that you're going to see a lot more. I think you're going to see more sort of ecosystems where you're still going to need a landfill. Let's face it. Number one, there's more than 250, 250 million tons of solid waste here. That's EPA. There's over 500 million tons it's generated. There's a lot of garbage. And a lot of it right now, we don't have uh, the technology to handle all of it. Some just don't have economic value to it right now. It's going to take a while. So, but you're always going to need a landfill. What you're going to see is you're going to see landfills right now where the trucks come in with organic waste and you have space for organic waste and it's going to be used to either generate power or, or be used to turn in the fuel like waste management is doing on the west coast. Okay? Then you're going to have wood waste coming in okay, for C and D and there will be a special use for that and what's, the residue will only go to the landfill. Uh, MRFs will become much more important because those are the facilities where you're going to basically all the different fractions of the waste stream are going to be sorted out. So you're going to see landfills with MRFs. It's going to be one big echo community. That's happening now. It's, it's in Europe and we're seeing it happen now. now it's going to be a major change. Go back to you a little bit because you're obviously excited to talk about this industry. You love it. I do yeah. love it. It's my bones. What if people coming up to you and saying here at your last Waste Expo, what are they telling you? What are they telling you about what you've done? Well, they've been telling me that uh, I've done a great job for the industry, that they're sorry that I'm retiring, that I'm irreplaceable, which is everybody's irreplaceable. That's why we have succession plans mm. in large corporations and small corporations. But they're going to miss me. I'm, I'm a really... Uh, a people person and when I look at people I don't think about what company they work for I do you have to do it but I, I, I'm more I want to open up to them mm -hmm. I'm a very open person very open person I have very few secrets if any and I think my, my skill set is when I talk to people and I share some of the things that I'm thinking about that some people think to themselves yeah I never said that to anybody, but hey, I think the same way. Whether it's your feeling about death, to be a little bit gruesome about mm -hmm. it, or morose, or just feelings about insecurity, or feelings about the economy, or feelings about marriage, things, nothing so personal, but I mean, but you just, we're all, we, we're all people of, we, we share this in common, we're human beings. We all think to some degree alike, we experience things alike, our emotions may be different, but it's when you, when you talk to a person, they respect you because they know you're talking to them as another human being. And that's the one thing I love about this industry. It is very true. People here, this is a very relationship-oriented mm -hmm. industry. Uh, I've seen 
there's a lot of competition involved, but when we get together for these chapter meetings, everybody lays down their sword and they hug each other. This is an industry where people have worked for different companies. Uh, most people right now that are big companies, they've started in big companies rather than they went to smaller companies and then went back to big companies. It's musical chairs, like mm -hmm. a lot of industry. But they all know each other and they help each other. And it's a very, you don't see people walking around in ties. If I went to see David Steiner tomorrow, he'd probably be wearing uh, Doc Siders and a pair of khakis, mm -hmm. okay? Next day he's on Wall Street, wearing a beautiful suit and a nice silk tie. Uh, that's what I love about this industry. You seem like you're really at peace with what your decision to, to leave. I am, I am at peace with it. That's a very good question. I am at peace with it, um, but I'm gonna miss it. Like I say, you can't be, you can't spend 30 years doing something, which in my situation is not quite half my life, but it's a large <laughs> part of it, and, and just walk away. So what else are you gonna do besides maybe a little keep your fingers in the business? Are you gonna golf? Are you gonna start doing some yard work finally? Um, I don't have any hobbies. Okay. I do like to garden. Uh, I, I love to read, and my favorite thing now, which I can never do is, I read on Sunday, I'll read the New York Times, literally, from front to end, every single article. That's what I do. And then I read the Washington Post, their Sunday edition. Um, and, you know, do I- Do the crossword, too? I don't do crosswords, no. I like, I love music. We've talked about that. We like the same uh -huh. type of music. You know, I'll, uh, I'll put my earphones on and dance in my living room and leave the <laughs> curtains open so my neighbors see it. So I can convince them. They say, what are you doing? And I say, I'm, I'm happy. Music makes me feel good. Yeah. Well, thank you It's my so pleasure. Much, and I thanks for everything it. you've done with the industry. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. 30 years? Yeah, long time.